Okay, so let's say between two banks there's a, a desire. Uh, bank one will have an extra hundred million dollars. Bank two wants uh, 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 the hundred million. Uh, and they look in the market and the interest rate now is 3.5. If they enter into a euro dollar futures contract now, they can lock in 3.5. So it's $100 million. So long position uh, will take 100 contracts at 96.50 because that's what the current futures price is, which implies an interest rate of 3.5. Remember now it's 100 minus R. So if we have 96.50, that says nothing about how much bank one deposits with bank two. That just tells us the interest rate of 3.5. Let's say it settles on September 19th at 97.40, which implies an interest rate of 2.6%. We want to see, did this contract in fact lock in an interest rate of 3.5% for this three-month period? And I've already answered this question on, on the uh, previous screen we went through. Why are we going long? Well, if rates drop to 3.4, that is bad for the long position because the long position is making the deposit. That would be a bad thing. They would get less interest during that three-month period of time. So they want to be compensated with a gain on the futures contract. Well, if it drops to 3.4, what happens to the price? It's not 96.5. It goes from 96.50 to 96.60. So there's the gain. They're long on the futures contract. There's the gain. So there we go. So here's what they entered into at 96.50. Here's what it settled at. So how much was made on the futures contract? Well, every basis point is for $25. We know that, right? Times the number of basis points. Well, we can see that it went up 90 basis points. So we could just multiply it by 90, or we could say, well, let's do it mathematically the long way so that we can always do it. 9740 implies that there are 9,740 basis points. Minus 9650 implies that there are 9,650 basis points. Well, there's our 90 anyways, right? We'll get $2,250 per contract. Remember, each contract is for $1 million. But we have 100 contracts. So we would multiply that by the 100 contracts that we entered into. And our futures uh, on the final day of settlement, the long position, will have $225,000. We'll have $225,000. Now, on that day, they initiate a deposit. On the last day of settlement, they'll make a deposit to Bank 2 and they will only receive 2.6% interest over those four months. So let's take our 100 million. Let's see if we get the same amount. At 2.6, which means the bank will receive, bank one will receive $650,000. But they've made 225, right? So that looks like they have 875,000. Well, if they would have gotten the 3.5% over that period of time, do the math on that, you'll get $875,000. So on a rough pass, it looks like it works, right? Now you're probably, if you've been following along, you probably cried foul at this point. You said, no, hang on a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. They don't actually deposit $100 million. So aren't you doing that wrong? They don't actually deposit $100 million. Yes, I am doing, technically I am doing it wrong, but technically I'm, but what I wanted to do was show that they could lock in, that they are locking in the 3.5% interest rate by showing that the gain on the contract will offset any loss on the interest rate. Now I'm going to show you how we would adjust this, how we, we took 100 long, how we would adjust that to reflect the fact that, well, we're not actually putting, we're not making a, a deposit of 100 million. We, the contract, the deposit will pay back 100 million, but we're putting something less than that in. So let's have a look at what that looks like. Okay, so here we are. Here's the settlement date of September 19th. Bank one, bank one will make a deposit to bank two. Bank two will then, at the end of the term, repay the hundred million. 
The question is, how much goes in, how much does Bank 1 actually deposit to Bank 2 to get back 100? All of this money market, uh, all of these money market securities are done at a discount, not an interest plus. Well, to figure it out, we just have to discount backwards by 3.5%. 100 million uh, discounted back by 1 plus. And in here in brackets, you can see all I'm doing is turning the 3.5 into a quarterly rate. And Bank One would deposit $99,132. Uh, one hundred thirty-two thousand five hundred ninety-nine five hundred ninety dollars uh, for ninety days and get back one hundred million. That would yield Bank One three point five percent. So they don't want to spend anything more than ninety-nine thousand one hundred thirty-two five ninety. Well, the contract ended such that they'll only actually get two point six percent now on this deposit. So the contract better make up the difference, right? They're only going to get two point six. So. How much do they actually have to deposit now? Well, if we discount that 2.6 back uh, for three months, they have to deposit 99,354,198 now. So it's going to cost $221,608 more than what they planned. So they have to get this 221,608 from somewhere. We've already done the hedge on 100 contracts, or locked in the, the, the rate on 100 contracts, and we saw that the, the futures contract paid off by $225,000. But we only need 221, because we're not putting 100 million. The deposit is not 100 million. The deposit is 99.13 million. We just get the 100 back. Now you may say, so what? That's good. We actually made more money. We made 225, not 221 bonus. But that's not what we're trying to do. 221 represents us locking in 3.5. Going from 221 to 225 represents speculation. We don't want to speculate because what if it went the other way on us? Instead of being up $3,400, we'd be down $3,400. So we want to get it right. So we adjust the number of contracts to reflect the investment of 99.13 million. How do we do that? Well, if we're going to put in 99.13 million and each contract is for 1 million, uh, that would be 99.13. The millions just cancel out, right? And now we have our number of contracts. There we go. So we have the number of contracts. Well, what if it wasn't 100 million? What if it was 75 million? What if it was 62 million? What if it was uh, 23 million? We don't want to have to, to do this calculation each time. We want some standard way to do it. So all we have to do is just take 1 and divide by 1 plus um, 0.25, uh, whatever the interest rate that we're trying to lock in. In this case, it's uh, 0 0.035 is what we're trying to lock in times the 0.25. And this will give us 0.9913259 uh, There we go. That's, that's the factor of which we would multiply the number of contracts we're using by. So we thought, uh, well, we have 100 million. Each contract is for 1 million equals 100 contracts. That 100, if we multiply that 100, will tell us we can adjust. This is our adjustment factor on our 100 contracts, we apply the adjustment factor, we'll get 99.13. There we go. Um, so all you have to do is just take one divided by, uh, or discount that, just one, just discount one dollar back by whatever interest rate you're trying to lock in, you'll get your adjustment factor. Um, figure out your number of contracts the normal way you would uh, by dividing uh, whatever maturity value you're going to get by the contract value. Apply your adjustment factor. There's the number of contracts you need. 99. There we go.